Hi everyone, this is Phil from It Gaming, and today I'm going to share with you 10 tips that I wish I knew when I started playing The Outer Worlds. The Outer Worlds is one of these games that quite literally drops you into it without telling you a whole lot of what to do. So here are 10 tips that I wish that I knew when I started playing The Outer Worlds. If you find any of these tips useful, remember to leave a like because it really helps out the channel a lot. My first tip is to pick up the Cheetah perk as early as you possibly can. The Cheetah perk is a tier one perk, which means you can pick it up as early as level two. And what it does is it increases the sprint speed by 20%. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, since sprinting doesn't drain stamina in the outer worlds, you can sprint for as long as you like. And since it's an open world title with a whole lot of traveling in between point A and point B, it should come as no surprise why it's really useful to have faster sprinting. My second tip is to get lockpicking to at least 20 points. Lockpicking requires mag picks, which is a consumable item, and at 20 points of lockpicking, it will reduce the cost of the mag picks that you need to use to open a lock, including the very easy locks, which will then become free. Since they're free to use, you can open them all up, and you won't be burning through all sorts of mag picks, and by the time you do encounter harder locks, you will have some mag picks to spare. The third tip I have is to pick up pickpocketing as early as you can, because at the moment it's kind of broken how good it is. How you're going to do that is by putting 40 points into sneak because it is the second skill unlock associated with sneak. If you've done so, what you can do then is you can sneak up behind pretty much any NPC in the game, and so long as you're out of line of sight of any other NPC, you'll be able to pickpocket them and there will be no consequences whatsoever. You'll be able to get lots of bits, lots of items to sell, lots of weapons to use, and it's even a way of advancing certain quest lines. Now, if you do manage to screw up and somebody what sees you, you you're still not totally screwed because you'll be able to lie or intimidate or persuade your way out of getting into a fight. Now, even in that situation, you will get a reputation deduction with whatever faction is associated with that NPC. But honestly, why would you not want to rob everyone in space? The fourth tip is how to respec in the Outer Worlds. The respec station is located on the Unreliable, that's your ship in the game, and it's located in the storage bay of the Unreliable. You'll find it in the upper gantry on essentially the second floor. In order to respec, it will take a small outlay of bits, 500 to start with, though that number does increase with subsequent respecs. It is important to note also that respecing resets your skills and your perks, but it will not reset your stats, so things like strength and intelligence will not be affected with a respec. The fifth tip is companion control. Now, if you look at the bottom left of your screen, you will see a series of symbols. The first one on the left is an arrow. If you press the button associated with the arrow, your companions will move in the direction you are looking at. If you hold that button, your companions will come right back to you. This is absolutely invaluable to get them to go where you want them to go, because let's be real, these are AI, and AI usually gets stuck on stuff. The second symbol is a targeting symbol. If you press the button associated with that, your companions will attack whatever you're looking at. So so be mindful of that. The third and fourth buttons are the power moves of your companions, and if you press them, you can see they go totally ham on whatever you are fighting. Do be aware, however, that those ones will only be available if you have 20 points in the Inspiration skill, which I highly recommend that it's worth it. Tip number six is tactical time dilation. Now, everything you do while you are in tactical time dilation will affect how fast it drains, which is the purple bar at the top left. And you see, as I move, the bar drains much faster. As I shoot, it drains really, really fast. So if you want your tactical time dilation to last as long as possible, make sure you aren't doing anything until you absolutely have to.
Tip number seven is marking items as junk. Often you'll get stuff you'll never use in this game, and you can mark it as junk by pressing, in my case, Z. You can see there's add to junk. And by pressing it, it will then go into my junk inventory, which I can click right there. I can see the item is right there. Why do you want to put it in junk? Because, well, if you go to a trader, you can sell all of your junk inventory all at once. You simply go to your sell tab and you can see down at the bottom it says hold Z to sell junk. It'll be different of course on console, whatever button you have to press, you just hold that button and you will sell all the junk. And in my case, I sold and got like 2,600 bits and now my junk inventory is entirely empty. My eighth tip is to read everything. Now there is lots of flavor text in the outer worlds in the form of notepads and computer messages. And I'm not suggesting that you actually read every single line of text of every single message, but I am suggesting that you at least click on everything. And the reason for that is often there will be quests directly associated with them and they will advance when you do so. And then you will get additional quest markers and it will just in general make your life easier. That being said, if you do have the time and the inclination, I highly recommend that you do actually read it because a lot of this writing is really well done. For tip number nine, we're gonna go into our settings menu. You'll find your settings menu in the main menu and you're gonna then click on the UI pane of the settings menu. We're gonna be looking at the show base item stats variable and what it does, it's off by default. And what it does on default is it will show the stats of the item, including whatever buffs your skills have for that item. So this pistol has a DPS of 134. That's partially because I have skills in pistols. So if I go back to my settings and I turn show base item stats on, it's going to remove my skill buff on that stat. So when we go back into my inventory, you can see that the DPS is actually lower. Now, why would you ever want to turn this on? Well, let's say you did want to respec and you wanted to know the power of two items in two different sets. So say a rifle and a pistol. If you have it turned on, then you can have a good, honest comparison of those two items. But if they're turned off, your skills get in the way of understanding the value of the items you actually have. The final tip is also located in the settings menu. What you're going to do, go to your menu, go to settings, and again, go to the UI pane. What we're going to be looking at this time is the show dialog skill stats variable. By default, it's set to only when close. What this variable does is it dictates which dialog options will be visible based on what your different skills are. If you have it set to always, no matter how crap your skills are, you will see all of the grayed out options that could be available if you had the skills. Now, why would you even want this since it won't change your ability to select them? Well, let's say you wanted to know what was available for another playthrough. This is a variable that allows you to do that. You could, however, if you so chose, set it to not show any unusable skill if you wanted to, if you wanted to be more realistic in what you're able to see. All of these things are available, and it's one of the reasons I really am enjoying The Outer Worlds, because it gives you so much customization to make the game the way you want it to be. Those were my 10 tips that I wish I knew starting off in The Outer Worlds. Do you have any other tips that we should have known about? Tell us what they are in the comments below. If you found this video useful, please feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. And as always, have fun out there.